everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. We on the road to 100K, man. Let's get there. Let's get there. 30-something thousand. 30-something thousand. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell somebody about this movement, man. Positive energy. Feed the positive. Starve the negative. We on the road to 100K. TBP, are you with me? Let's go. I appreciate everybody, man, that's been rocking with the stories. Everybody's been leaving comments, man. I told y'all, talk to me, I talk back. Y'all know how we do it over here. Um, today, I was just sitting here thinking this morning, man, about chess, because I talked to uh, one of my old chess foes yesterday, and he he just made uh, parole. I'm waiting for him to come home. I'm definitely going to bring him to y'all. Salute to Teeny, you know, uh, one of my, my one of my chess nemesis and um he did the exact same amount of time I did, 33 years, and he's on his way home, just got his liberation, man. So salute to the soldier, you know, and uh can't wait to see him. But uh man, we had some mean chess wars, man. I mean some mean chess wars. And I'ma tell y'all something about chess in prison, man, that a lot of people may not know. <laughs> But chess is a very, very competitive, dangerous game in prison. Very dangerous. And the reason why it's dangerous is because of the environment and because of the egos that get involved. That's one of the worst things people hate in there, man, is losing in chess. When they lose in chess in there, man, <laughs> anything can pop off. I mean, dudes lose their mind when they lose in chess. And... At first, when I was learning the game and watching it, I couldn't really understand it. But to be honest with you, you know, I I, I became a part of it as well. You know, I hated to lose. Um, I when I did lose, I was mad. I try to, I always try to conceal it. I always try to hold it in. But it was, I'm telling you, it was very difficult because in prison chess is like everything in prison is competitive. Everything in prison is ego driven. So. When you lose, man, it's like a dude feel like he's smarter than you. You know what I'm saying? So that is, that's like a that's like a blow to the ego. And you may be looking at this cat saying to yourself, he ain't no way in the world this dude smarter than me, you know, but but when you give him that win, them bragging rights, man, it's just crazy. And then in in their chess is like <laughs> I mean, it's like trash talking, man, with chess, man. It's like you see dudes on the basketball court and they cooking somebody something and they running their mouth and they talking trash. That's how chess is in prison. When a dude is beating you, man, he's talking trash, he's running his mouth, he's getting loud, other people come by and start watching the game. And, man, it's like a big event, man, especially when it's, it's, it's people that, that supposedly have a good chess game. And then you sitting there playing, and then somebody else come in the pod, and they say, oh, yeah, well, he played chess. All right, well, come on, go play such, such. And then you playing. Everybody's over there watching. They're just sitting there watching the game, watching the moves. And then you get some dudes, they'll make comments on the side and be like, oh, you missed a move or something, man. And then dudes is playing to look at him. He'll get mad. The other dude will get mad. I mean, anything you can think of, I've seen it in chess when it comes to Fights, violence, uh, uh, everything. It it goes down with chess, man. One of the one of the first jumps I remember, way back, man, on Augusta. I was on Augusta. I'm fresh in my 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 sentence, my bit, man. I, I can't be no more than about a couple of years in. You know, uh, I'm still in the late '80s. I got locked up in '87, as you can see. You know, uh, yeah. 87, you know, all the way to 2020 before I got my liberation. But I can remember being on Augusta, man. They had this old cat on there named Sims. I remember Sims real well, man. Sims was one of them slick old dudes that had already been locked up 20, 30 years, man. Already. And he was, 
he had the, the gold fangs in his mouth, like a gold crown right here, a gold crown right here on the outside of his two front teeth. And um, he was still in shape for an old guy, man. He was in shape. He had long arms. He was slim. And he used to box, you know. So he still had a, you know, he still had a little firepower with him, you know. And he was aggressive. And he was slick talking. And, you know, one thing I learned over the years, too, with, with, with dudes that have been locked up a long time, that I ran into early in my bed and stuff, man. They always feel like you owe them something, man. They always feel like you owe them. So they always ask you for something. Hey, hey, young, young, let me get a suit, man. Uh, young, let me get a honey bun. Uh, young, let me get a soap. And when you don't have it, they mad. You know what I'm saying? They got an attitude with you because you're not giving them nothing. That's that's how all the old heads that I used to meet when I first got locked up. But well, I ain't gonna say all of them, most of them. That's how they used to be. They used to feel like, man, you owe him something. And Sims was one of them type dudes. And he and they have no conscience, none whatsoever. They ask you for something every day. You know what I'm saying? As if you really take care of them or you really, you know, filing taxes for them or something. Man, I just gave you a, a two suits yesterday. Okay, well, the day is the day. Is, man, come on. You got it? You got it? Let me get it. You know, he had an old squeaky old voice, right? But he was a cool dude, man, you know, and then when you're young like that and you're in the penitentiary, you're looking at those dudes and you be like, man, God almighty, how you do 30? You know, it just was unconceivable. You know what I'm saying? That somebody did that much time, man, and they still walking around, you know, sane or semi-sane or some of them insane. But the ones that were sane or, or, or had, you know, good sense, man, it was just, I marveled at that, you know, because I was I couldn't even conceive that. But Sims was one of those type of dudes, but he loved to play chess. He loved to talk boxing because he, you know, he's supposed to have been a bad man in his day. You know, I fact checked him and dudes say he used to get it in. He used to put that work in. And he he will pick that Bethlehem up too. And you know. So he loved chess though. So he'd get out and he was smart. So he would he would beat, you know, most people all the time. So um I remember he was playing this dude named Cook. Now, Cook was one of these type of dudes that was an intellectual. Cook is also the dude, if you go back in my stories, where I talked about Big A, you know, from D.C., Big A. You know, Cook was the dude that Big A ended up stabbing, and then Cook turned around and let people put the battery in his back and came back, you know, later and ended up stabbing Big A and almost killed him. You know, lesson learned in prison, you know. If you do something to somebody, especially if it's physical or violence, you cannot have them people around you. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care. They say the beef is squads. I, if you have them around you after you have physically hurt them, especially if you done stabbed them or something, you, it, it's at your own risk. You know, it could be next week. It could be next month. It could be next year. You could end up dying behind that right there. You got. The, you cannot be around them no more. Big A learned that lesson the hard way. But... Back to Cook. Cook was an intellectual, though. He he wasn't about that drama. Like I say, somebody made him do that, or you know, they told man, you got you know. He ended up doing it, you know. In, in regards, he did it, you know. But he was a, he was a quiet dude. He was a humble dude, and he was smart dude. He you know he, he he was book smart, and he played that chess, so he was real good. So he was playing Sims, and they had been playing a couple of games, and he had got out on Sims about about two three games. And then Sims sitting there and then he focused. He focused. He trying to really beat this dude. <laughs> and you got this big bama named Mike. He from Call Pepper. I never forget. He was, he was he was swole up. He just worked out all the time. But he was a young cat. He wanted more than like early 20s. You know, and he always running his mouth. And he he was cool with Cook. So he sitting there watching the game, just like me and a couple of other dudes watching the game. I may have spoke on this before, a long time ago, because I just remember this incident so vividly. Because it was like one of the first, you know, things I seen that popped off over chess. So he steady keep on laughing because Cook is winning or Cook make a good move and take one of the pieces or something like that. And Sims kept telling him, man, stay off the game, man, mind your business. And he keep on saying, man, I can say what I want, man. I'm, I'm watching the games. Man, mind your business, young. I'm telling you, I ain't going to keep on telling you, man, your business, man. So he getting madder and madder. And, and Mike is not taking heed to what he's saying. And man, and Cook ended up winning that game. And when he won that game, 
And Mike started laughing and running his mouth, man, seeing him say, man, didn't I tell you, man, to stay out my business? And before Mike can pop off at his mouth, boop, boop, he got hit in the mouth. Knocked him down. He jumped back up, tried to charge him again, see him, hit him again. Boom, boom, boom. Knocked that man front teeth out, man. Knocked his front teeth out, gave him a buck naked. Messed his starting five all the way up. <laughs> it was crazy. And he kept trying to get up. And Sims kept, I'm going to beat you to death, boy. I'm going to kill you. And he couldn't do nothing with him. He couldn't do nothing with him. And like I say, Sims was old. And Mike just was swole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Sims had skills, man. He beat that boy, man. And knocked that boy teeth out, man. Bust him up, man. You know, swell him up. Decent. And um, he had to wear that. You know what I'm saying? He had to wear that. You know, straight like that. And that's a hard, hard lesson. I remember running into him down the line, man. He had that missing tooth, and that's all I ever thought about, man, was that chess game. And him running his mouth to Sims. And he ain't try to do nothing. He ain't, you know, he ain't try to get back at him. He ain't because he knew he knew the count. Dudes was telling him, man, that, that man, that old dude gonna kill you, man. He gonna kill you if you go messing with him, dog. So he actually had to wear that, man, walking around with a missing teeth, rest of his life. Lesson learned for him, putting his mouth in other people's business, messing with old timers that have been in that penitentiary a long time. If they've been in that penitentiary all that time and they still walking on all two and they ain't got no colostomy bag, they ain't got no one eye, they ain't nobody's uh, pump or nothing like that, don't get confused by what you see. If he look old, he got old because he knew how to get old in the penitentiary. You go fooling with them people, man, you gonna get late. You know, and he learned that the hard way, man. And like I say, at that time, I'm young, so I'm watching and I'm observing and I'm learning as well. You know what I'm saying? But he took a hard lesson, you know. <laughs> I used my eyes and my ears. You know, he used his mouth and ended up losing his teeth. But that was just the beginning, man, of, of, of all the incidents that I seen over the years messing with that chest, man. Messing with that chest. It's just like I say, dudes cannot take it, man. They cannot take the loss, but they 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 just love to win, man. When they win, and you got dudes like that. I've dealt with dudes like that. I've dealt with a lot of dudes like that. When they winning, man, they gonna be running their mouth. They gonna go tell everybody, you know, or, you know, they beat you two or three games. You know, they gonna walk around. It's like little kid stuff, man. They gonna walk around and whisper in somebody's ear, yeah, go ask her. Go ask him how many games I beat him. Go, go, go ask him. And they're going to just sit back in the cut and watch somebody come ask you and watch your reaction. Man, you, hey, it's a vicious game, man. It's, and dudes will get mad behind that, and dudes will end up wanting to, you know, turn it into something real. Man, would you keep sending people to me, asking me about what you won a couple of games, you acting like you did something. How many games I done beat you? Oh, I ain't tell him go out. You did tell him, how would he know it? And all of that goes on. Then next thing you know, man, oh, you get mad about the game, man. You you, you, you in your feelings. What you mean in my feelings? Bang, bang, bang. They fighting. They rumbling. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like some high school stuff, some junior high school stuff, but it's real. It's real in the penitentiary and it gets even deeper because now, like I say, once you get into the physical, anything can pop off because egos is still involved and you can't be taking no whoopings in prison. If you take whoopings in prison, then the wolves is out. Everybody is going to try to savage you. Everybody's going to disrespect you. Everybody's going to think you're an easy win. You see what I'm saying? So it, it's just crazy, man. You know, <laughs> man, I done, I, I done had fallen out with homeboys. Uh, friends, um, all types of people, man, playing chess, playing chess, you know, winning and talking, because I'm a talker, it ain't no question, and I'm being honest, I can dish it, <laughs> but I can't take it, I can't take it, man, I, I can't take it if I, and chess is mental, you know, you can't have other things on your mind when you're playing chess, if you go down there, you got a lot of things on your mind, you're trying to clear you know, you know, you know, you're trying to kill some time, but you got all this other stuff going on, you know, with you, whatever the case may be. And you go there and there play and you're not focused and you're playing somebody who can really play. They're going to smoke you. You know what I'm saying? And you get smoked and they're going to be so happy that they beat you. They're going to tell everybody. They're going to be running their mouth. And then you already, you know, dealing with whatever you're dealing with. So you shouldn't have played anyway because anybody who beat you, they're going to keep running their mouth. And then 
you subject to all of that because when you win, you run your mouth. But then you in your feelings. Then you like, man, would you shut up, man? You won a couple of games. What's I mean, okay, what? You know, and all depending on their reaction to what you saying to them, it could turn into something ugly. It could turn into something ugly. Man, yeah, I, I had a, I had a few dudes, man, that I played with over the years. Shout out to Dur Jones though, man. Dur Jones, he he probably him and um Johnny Nelson, man, they probably the two best. And Spoon. Spoon was also a student of uh Daryl, as well as I was a student of Daryl. But them probably the best dudes I seen playing chess. Spoon just kept up with it, kept up with it. He just became a, a monster. You know, I ran into him over a decade and something later, man. He beat almost everybody on the compound. You know, he went in chess tournaments and everything. But at the time, me and him was learning how to play. Both of us was young, you know, but he just kept with it. You know, I got in this, that, in the third, woo, 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 woo. I want his focus. But at the same time, I still loved the game and I still studied the game, but not as much as him. But I got good, and you, I'm telling you right now, you can come play me right now if you don't believe me. I try to get 16 in life to take the bait, but he ain't take it. But we still got a chess game coming, man, and uh. Uh, anybody else who want to play, uh, I put put the challenge out there to you if you done dealt with me. Uh, Sean G, I don't, you should be a chess player. You know, I fashion you as an intellectual. Anybody who want to smoke, I give them the smoke, man, because uh, it's a beautiful game. But it's a dangerous game. It's a very dangerous game. And probably not so much out here, but in prison, dangerous game, man. You know, because you, you name it, like I said, I've seen it. I've seen dudes playing chess. And do be the dude, man, five, six, seven games and just be relentless. Won't let up on him. Keep running his mouth, talking about how dumb. I mean, they get vicious. I'm talking about like, man, you dumb, man. What, what, what are you trying to play me for, man? You stupid. You stupid, man. You you should not be playing chess, man. You should be playing checkers. Man, just play the game. Man, you, man, look at you, man. You making kid moves, man. Look, oh, up, oh, and then <laughs> it's on. You know, I seen dudes jump across the table and get the rumbling. I seen dudes come to the chessboard playing chess and got the Bethlehem on waiting for, for somebody to try to embarrass them, waiting for somebody to keep running their mouth, and it, it, it pops off. Just like that. Just like that, man. And, and it don't stop. I, I have never been in a, a, a pod that I can remember anywhere in prison where somebody won't play chess. Every day. It's an everyday activity. Um, I don't remember being in no block where I ain't see dudes arguing about chess. I don't remember being in no block where I ain't seen at least one fight, one altercation, one physical uh, valid act behind chess. You know, and you would think dudes won't play because of that, but they do. They do, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, it, it, it always turns into something else because the loser is going to feel inferior because it's a thinking man's game, you know, and um, it's vicious, man. And a couple of the other cases I had behind chess is crazy, man. It's crazy. I was playing this cat one day, <laughs> and he won. He won the second game. No, he won the first game. And that was one of my things I used to always tell a dude, too. I used to always say, I say, if you could really, really play at the time that I had really learned how to play myself, I used to say, you might win beat me the first game of the day because um I used to say I always say yeah my chest sense is waking up man now they wait you know you know everything is working properly so he won the first game and just kept running his mouth and running his mouth man so I turned around and, and, and proceeded to beat him like the next eight nine games straight and I'm giving it to him I'm, I'm well, what's all this stuff you was talking man well I mean what did you you stupid yeah I don't even understand who else you be I let you win one game. I was going to keep letting you win, and then you want to run your mouth, and then this is what you get. And, man, he was getting blood, man. And to be honest with you, the matter he got, the more I talk. The matter he got, the more it humored me. And I didn't think he, uh, you know, had no, no, you know, no uh, cojones, you know, because he didn't look like it. But I talked so much stuff to him, man, and I just kept beating him, and I kept beating him, and then we, I said, set the boat up. I'm going to beat you all day. I'm going to beat you like you stole something. You should have never sat down here in front of me and tried to play. You knew you was dumb. You knew you ain't had no sense playing chess. You should be over there doing something. And I just was, I was dogging him. 
And man, I told that boy, I set that board up. And the next thing you know, he pushed them pieces over. And that man did one of the worst things you could do to a man or human being. He reached across there and spit in my face. <laughs> yeah, I said what I said. That man spit in my face. And let me tell you, I could not get over that table quick enough. I didn't try to go around the table. I went across the table. I jumped across that table and I grabbed him by his neck and he pulled me and dragged me all the way the rest of the way across the table and we fell on the floor. And man, I'm telling you something. If it won't for that CO making a round, a CO was in that block making a round. But when he spit in my face, man, I just went in a fit of rage, man. And we on the floor tussling, but I want to get up because I want to put these mitts on but we scrambling and tussling and then the CO done seen us, he calling the 1033. And before I could can maneuver to get this uh bam up, I could stand up and just I just wanted to, I wanted to hit him so bad, man. And they came in there bum rushing, man, and they jumped all on us and you know did what they do, you know, put the little twist in the fold up on your ball y'all up and drag this. I swear on. Everything, if I would have ever seen him again, I was going to, man, I was going to punish him. <laughs> How that boy spit in my face over a chess game. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, it goes down. And I wish I could tell you that I was able to beat the bricks off of him, but I was I couldn't get him. I couldn't get up in enough time. I didn't have enough time. I think he knew what he was doing. He knew the police was in there. That's why he did it when he did it. You know what I'm saying? Because the police won't know, he won't know further than 10, 12 feet away from us. You know what I'm saying? So when you pull a move like that, it ain't nothing but a, you know what I'm saying, a check-in move. He's scared. He want to get out, but at the same time, he wanted to make a statement with me. And he he made one because he, he I think he might have put me on the enemy list because I never ran into him again. And had I ran into him again, he, yeah, he, he would have remembered me forever. You know what I'm saying? But, uh <laughs> He did spit in my face, man. He, he spit in my face. But, you know, those those things like that, you know, it, it, it happens, you know. I done been playing with my homeboy when I was up in the mountains. He big, big old dude. Big John. Shout out to Big John, man. I hope he out. John was a good dude, man. He was actually a homeboy. He from the city and everything. He loved to play. He loved to laugh at you when you lose. And he had a good game. He loved to laugh at you when you lose, talk trash to you, run his mouth, giggle like a little kid and everything. Man, when that dude is losing, man, he is blood mad. He ready to fight. He ready to punch dudes in the face. He ready to go to their cell and whoop them. But at the same time, he tell them to shut up. He don't want to hurt nothing. But when he winning, he, that's all he do is talk. All he do is laugh and giggle like a little kid. He make a move or you lose your major piece, your queen or something, or he can really put you in checkmate. He be like, <laughs> you want to start over? <laughs> you want to start over? This over, but you can't. It's impossible for you to win. He do all of that, you know, and humiliating you because dudes on the sideline watching, laughing at you. You know, you looking humiliated, you know, <laughs> and he do all that. If he losing and you do it, he be cross there looking at you like this. Man, you better go ahead and play, man. Stop playing with me, man. Play the game, man. Don't talk. Don't say nothing. Just play, man. Make your move, man. That's how he and he's serious. <laughs> he dead serious. Chess is crazy in prison, man. It's a, it's a crazy game, man. It's a violent game. You know, I done seen dudes get to playing and they they argue. They play every day. They play every day and this one might win today, this one might win tomorrow. And those same two dudes, every day I seen them play for months on end. And this one particular day, man, on the weekend, on a Saturday, man, they played, man, they got the argument, they stopped, they knocked the chess pieces over, they go on about their business, everybody say boom, boom, boom. You know, later on that evening, they come out, they still arguing, they walking past each other, don't say this to me no more, we don't talk no more, we don't got nothing to do with each other no more. Okay, yeah, all right, then it goes to F you, then F you too, and then next thing you know, boom, bam, take off on them. And old boy pulled that thing out, and I mean, he lit him up, man. He lit him up. He sent him up out there. 
sent him up out there. He got on top of him and was just hitting him, hitting him. They scrambling and he trying to get the knife away from him. And these dudes played chess every day for months. Months that I was in there with them. I don't know. They probably had been playing for years. They probably had been around each other for years. Just like that. Relationship old friendship dead. They trying to kill each other. Trying to kill each other. One got a charge, one going to the hospital. You see what I'm saying? All over chess. All over chess, man. So, like I say, it you it is so it's so born in prison. Trust me, definitely born. So you need to find that. And chess is a good game because it helps you stimulate your mind. It helps you think and all of that. But it's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game. And it ain't no such thing in prison that I know of but playing, you know what I'm saying, and not running your mouth. You even got white dudes in there to play. And they probably the only ones that don't really be running their mouth. But they don't really like to play with dudes because when they play with dudes, especially the black dudes, the black dudes going to be running their mouth. The black dudes going to get mad when they lose it. You know what I'm saying? When I, I knew a white dude, he could he was beating everybody. You know what I'm saying? I never even played him, but he was beating everybody. And he was just as quiet as a church mouth. And dudes would get mad because they felt like his quietness was arrogant. <laughs> they felt like he was being quiet, that he was, you know, trying to, you know, belittle them. Because he won't talk. Crazy, man. Chess is is it's a wild game, man. It's a wild game in prison, man. And the crazy part about it is I still love it. You know what I'm saying? I love it, you know. And um, I wish it came without all the drama. But at some points, when it don't go too far, I love that part too. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the back and forth. You know, I was talking to a dude the other day as well, man. One of my biggest nemesis, man. Old dude named Rail. He should be coming home soon too. I definitely going to bring him to y'all. And man... This was right in uh, Nottaway, right before I made parole. So you talking about all the way up to like 20, 2020, you know, uh, yeah, like 2020. I, I, I used to play real, real moved in the party and everybody said they had a good game and I felt like I had the best game in there. And I had a couple of dudes in there that I used to play with. There was decent competition and they were sale partners and they play each other and get the beefing in the sale and don't even want to talk to each other for days on end. You know what I'm saying? Whoever come out the victor, Yada and Twin. Yada and Twin. Yada got, Yada got the most annoying voice that you probably will ever hear in your life. It's like he got... <laughs> it's like everybody know the police even hate to hear him talk because he will not stop talking either, knowing that his voice is just just screeching. He got like a raspy, low... It's like he, it's like something stuck in his throat. He's like, man, I'm trying to tell you, man, this... Man, listen, uh, this is how he talk. And he can beat you. He one of the ones will go tell everybody in the block that he beat you. Uh, go, ahead, go ask Beggy. Go ask Beggy who won the games, who won the most games and stuff that they go ask. And, and he want to laugh. He want to laugh. He want to joke. Soon as you beat him, he don't want to talk to you no more. Look, man, the game over, man. I, that, that, I ain't playing you no more. That, that's why I ain't playing no more. Because you acting like a kid. You acting like, it, it, it didn't mean that much to you. It mean that, it mean that much to you when <laughs> you win. But the, like I say, dudes can dish it. They, they, they can't take it. You know what I'm saying? And I can't really say because I couldn't take it. So I fit in the same category. I may not have went to the extreme as them, but y'all would go, y'all won't even talk to you. I have beat them before in eight, nine games and, and laughed at him and joked on him and everything. The man ain't talked to me for a month. <laughs> the man ain't talked to me for a month. You know what I'm saying? Walk right by me. And this dude talked to me every day. Walk right by me. Hey, hey man, just, just, you know, do your thing, man. Don't, don't I, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. You know, I said, what's up, y'all? How you doing today? Man, man, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so I used to play twin and then, then they moved. They move real in the park. So everybody said, man, real got a real good game. Real. So real started beating everybody. So then he said, yeah, come on, bank, you want to play? Everybody said, you can play, play. So I go down there and play him. And man, he had a good game, man. He, he had a good, and he runs that mouth. He runs that mouth, man. And, and see, one thing about the game to me is when you, me personally, when I play somebody, even if they got a real good game, a better game than me, if I play you for a while, I'm going to figure you out. I'm going to figure your moves out. I'm going to be able to strategize. I'm going to be able to plan. And I'm going to get better at playing you. And I'm going to start beating you. Or we're going to be going back and forth. And that's what happened with me and Rail. 
Now you let him tell it. He called me on the phone. He claims he always win, which is a lie. And I told him when he come out here, he bring that raggedy game out here. I'm gonna beat him out here too. And I'm gonna film it and I'm gonna let the world see it. I said the penitentiary scene, and I'm gonna let the world see it. Oh man, you ain't gonna do nothing, man. You can't play, man. I used to yeah, he's still around, still running his mouth, we even on the on the phone, you know what I'm saying? But that's just how the game go, man. And you know, if you got real respect for a dude, it it it, it, it it's gonna always stay in the talking stage. But when you playing people that you really don't know and this is already, you know, the way they act when they play, you're going to take it personal and it's probably going to turn into something else. It's probably going to turn into something else, man. So, yeah, over the years, man, I've seen dudes get the teeth knocked out. I've seen dudes get that Bethlehem put in them. I've seen dudes get black eyes, you know, uh, cuts on their face, uh, head bust open, everything all over a chess game. All over a chess game, man. And they got old, old dudes, really old, like in their 70s and 60s, late 60s. They play checkers, and they done got up and start swinging at each other, you know? <laughs> they done got up and start swinging over checkers. Over checkers, man. So, bottom line is, man, everything in prison is potentially dangerous, man. It's potentially dangerous. So, you know, it's just because of the environment, it's where you at. And um, it's all that's going on with a person personally, you know, uh, 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 mentally, physically, spiritually, everything is going to come out in penitentiary. So it's just a crazy environment, man. But chess is one of the often, most often played games in prison. But it's also one of the most violent games played in prison. And you would not think that. But I truly believe it would probably have to be between it would probably have to be between basketball and chess, which have created the most fights, the most, you know, <laughs> the most altercations. cases, you know, as far as like playing something, chess or basketball. Basketball, they get it in, you know, because it's egos, egos, egos. Chess is the same way, man. They go hand in hand. That violence is going to come along with it. So if you, if you like to play and you in there, this is what you're going to be facing. You know, this is what you're going to be facing. If you're losing, you're going to be facing because you're going to be ridiculed and called all types of dummies and this, that, and the third. And if you're winning, then dude's going to be upset because he thinks you're smarter than him. And sometimes you just may be. But he don't even want to admit that and he don't want to accept that. And it's going to cause altercations, man. But anyway, man, this is just a little something about how chess goes down in prison. I just wanted to drop this on y'all, man. I've had a many, many... uh chess games of many, many chess wars, man, many, many chess arguments, man, and uh, only a few chess uh, uh, physical altercations, just a few. But if y'all want to know any more about chess, man, just uh, hit me up in the comments, let me know, man, you might jog my memory, I may think of more, I just wanted to drop y'all, drop this on y'all right fast, because I just talked to somebody, and it just brought it up in my mind. But um, yes, just like everything else in prison, man, chess is, is a dangerous game, man, a dangerous game. But prison is a dangerous game, so stay out of prison. You know, it's a blessing in every lesson. The lesson is you can play chess out here. You can play chess in the library. You can buy a chess game and exercise your brain, your intellect, by matching wits with somebody else. And you never have to see what happened in prison over a chess game. I, 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 I doubt very seriously it goes down like that out here. I would hope not anyway. I've had a few chess games out here, and um, it's always been okay. You know what I'm saying? It ain't never been nothing like that. And I, I had to um, stifle myself for running, my, for running my mouth, you know, because it's a force of habit. But, you know, like I say, you out here in the streets, man. That's the blessing and this lesson. Stay out here in these streets. Be safe. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. Enjoy your life out here, you know, and um, have some fun and enjoy your family, man. TBP salute. We out here, man. Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. Dump them hooks, man. Boom, boom, boom. Even in chess games, man. Everything is war in prison. Everything. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got. 
coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.